Okay. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Hajime from IIJ Lab. I'm happy to present this topic again in this conference. Uh, I'm also going, uh, I'm again going to talk about the user space network stack uh, based on my current project. So this is the joint work of the, my past internship students, uh, Christina Opish, Christina, uh, which was happened in the last summer. So I have been talked about a couple of uh, user space library network stack talk in the past NetDev conference. Uh, those are the list of the, my talk. I was talk about the generic general network stack in the user space and also present uh, the kernel continuous integration tests um, based on the user space network stack as NSC uh, was trying to do. And then uh, some somebody uh, Jerry Jerry Chu from Google also presented a kind of performance improvement of the the user space network stack and then uh, I also presented last time and uh, with the different topic. And uh, this time I was going to talk about uh, Android network stack. So this is probably the popular chat that uh, Android is deployed on deployed huge, uh, hugest size of, uh, Android has the hugest size of the deployment. Uh, there are probably the more than billions devices installed installed the Linux kernel. And the right side chart shows it's a little bit hard to recognize, but uh, the distributions of the Android, uh, the base operating system installed in the every Android devices. And uh, this was taken, this, is, this snapshot was taken at a couple of days ago. And even though recent days, uh, the majority of the Android um, firmware is based on the version, Android version 6. Which was which is much marrow, and the numbers on on top of this chart is uh, representing that the, ba the the base kernel version on the Linux kernel. So, as you can see, the most of the deployed and the collected information on the Android devices is still using three point um, based kernel. Uh, although there are so many backports and security uh, related updates into this kind of Android versions uh, uh, operating system. But uh, one might have a question that uh, if you, you guys develop the upstream your improvement to the latest upstream kernel, when you up upstream the kernel, uh, up upstream code is available on the Android devices. Or if you have come up with nice uh, great idea of the network protocols or network Devices, what, what, ha what, what can we do if you want to install and uh, try to play with the Android devices? So the answers for those questions will be: we need to wait until the the base version will be upgraded in the Android Android platform, or you want to backport each of the functions that you uh, you are introducing. And if you want to test use with your uh, own addition to the Linux kernel with the Android devices, you can actually create your own kernel with and putting this kernel image kernel into your Android custom firmware images. So that's kind of the benefit of the Android ecosystem. You can freely organize your software, which running on top of the Android devices. But if you consider the long term, uh, if you consider the broader delivery of the software updates, it might be taking so much long time to the all of the billions of devices. And the Android community has been already aware of these issues. And then there are a couple of approaches to alleviate this uh, kind of problems. The obvious, uh, obvious approach to do such as updates is introducing the virtualization technologies. Um, but the, the overhead with the hypervisor based technology sh should be not should not be negligible, especially for the, these kind of embedded devices. And uh, there is a new project which is called Project Travel. I think this is this con uh, their contribution is available since the latest Android version. 
So the motivation of this project is trying to decouple the co software component inside the Android devices and trying to introduce a new layer between the hardware vendor specific uh, implementation and operating system layer. So by decoupling those two different parts, the delivery process should be uh, shorter than the previous uh, design of the Android firmware. And uh, there, are, there is also new activities uh, to rewrite the operating system from scratch for the Android or mobile, not it's, it's gonna be not Android, but uh, for the mobile devices in general. That the project was called Fushia. And I guess they started their writing operating system from scratch in last year, I guess. And then uh, we can expect so much uh, expectation for that new project, but uh, it's going to take long. I mean, the, the project uh, has been um, started recently, so there's not much uh, production level code at this moment. And if you want just if you if you just want to introduce the new transport protocol, for example, you can also use the you can also introduce the uh, transport protocol over UDP as Quick is doing. And our, our approach is slightly different, which is called uh, network stack personality. And this is is this is just uh, the deployment way to introduce the network stack uh, implemented in the user space. So everything is implementing in user space, but so you don't have to replace the host operating system kernel in order to extend the network stack functionality. But at the same time, we try to preserve the all the functionality available for the existing application. Otherwise, we need to rewrite all the application as well as the network stack uh, if you have a new network stack. So we call this kind of functionality as a news, which is also re relevant to the fuse file system in user space, but the network stack part of the user space. So everybody doesn't uh, don't believe about the user space implementation, especially for the network stack part, as well as the file system part. Somebody says those kind of tools are toys laid by the misguided people. And somebody said this is kind of selfish way to introduce something. But um, I, I partially agree with that, but uh, my motivation for doing this kind of stuff is trying to present that this kind of toy is practically, practically useful. So I'm going to uh, introduce about this, the internals of the software that we are develop, developing. The project name is called Linux Kernel Library, or LKL. I have been talking about this figure in the past, but uh, I try to do it again. So LKL is uh, out of tree architecture, which is, uh, which is located un under the arc slash directory of the Linux kernel. And it's totally hardware independent. The hardware dependent part can be resolved at the, at the, the other part. So by introducing architecture, we can uh, completely use the existing Linux kernel tree code as a user space library, for example. The user space part is only, um, only one example for the various available platform because this is just a library. If you want to run some application on the, your own platform, and if you link this library, maybe you can benefit with Linux network stuff in the different environment. For example, uh, current LKL supports, supports the Linux user space uh, execution, as well as Windows and the FreeBSD user space. And uh, somebody also play with the UEFI bootloader to mount the EXT4 file system and so inside the inside the bootloader. And I have also played with the network meta integration in order to test and continuous, continuously integrate uh, to, to detect the regression bugs. And this time its extension is around this part. Uh, 
to support and uh, to learn an application with this library. So the project status is somehow stored. I mean, the initial RFC was sent in the two years ago by Octavian Pardier, and the primary primary developer of this project. And then since then, there is no, there is no update for the in the LKM mailing list. But we have been wa we have been working on a GitHub uh, project page uh, by improving a bunch of functionality to the code uh, to the code base. So we plan to update our patch set and uh, try to uh, try to propose again in the future. But we are not sure when it's going it's going to be. And the extension to this uh, LKL this time is uh, trying to support uh, Android devices, which is just uh, kind of the, the improvement to the cross-compilation tool uh, for the LKL. And uh, we also ex extended the, the network backend available for LKL, which was implemented, implemented as a BAT IO devices. So in order to support the cellular interface uh, equipped in the Android devices, we extended the pa packet socket extension to handle the only the IP encapsulation. And uh, to support uh, Android application implemented in Java, we also has to have to extend our hijack library. I'm going to detail about this hijack library later, but this is the list of the extension. So by using this library, how to use it on your Android devices? So if your application is a console application, we can just use the LD preload uh, environment of variable mm. with, the, with the name of the library, uh, hijack library. And if the application is the Java application, uh, Android provides some some way to introduce the environmental variable by configuring the properties of the applications. And with library configuration, we also can configure the network stack itself by writing this kind of JSON files in order to configure the IP address as well as the various scanner parameters. So the next is uh, what is the hijack library? Uh, hijack library is uh, is a way to replace the ava uh, available function call into the Linux 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 kernel library, which was implemented in the user space. So typical application usually invoke the system call, and it's going to the it is going to be the host kernel. But by using the hijack library, those system calls can be redirected into the user space. So the code path should be the, this dotted line in order to in order to use the Linux kernel library. So by doing so, we need to replace the standard library symbols with the LED preload. But we had some some. Uh, serious issues with the GNU, uh, GNU standard library available in the most desk desktop operating system. But uh, I'm not getting into detail, but the Bionic stand standard library available in the Android platform is relatively simple and more familiar for the, this kind of use cases. So we just use the Bionic library and then replace some socket-related symbol, uh, which is going to be the Linux kernel libraries. So by using those extensions, so we are going to present the, some of the example use cases to introduce the new network stack functions. And uh, I picked the Marchpass TCP extension as an example of the kernel extension. So Marchpass TCP is kind of long time out of three extension, which uh, extended the existing TCP subsystem. And the goal for this uh, extension is trying to utilize, 
utilize the multiple passes available in the uh, end endpoint devices. So if you if your devices has a two two different connection to the to the internet, so the the endpoint can utilize the aggregated um, passes, which might be benefit the better 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 throughput for the downloading and uploading data. And uh, by having the multiple uh, passes, the redundancy is also uh, redundancy is also accomplished by conducting the handover between the available uh, network interfaces. So I'm going to show some of the demo by using the Android phone. I hope it is working well. So this is this is this. I mean Nexus 5 phone installing the stock version of the Android kernel, showing around this kernel version. And uh, I'm using my custom web browser application, which try to inter uh, try to load the hijack library as I mentioned before. So if I type to this verification site, which verifies the the client device is capable with the multiple TCP or not. So with Chrome stock version of the Chrome browser, this site should should present no as a result of these pages. But with uh, user, steps, user space extension attached to the dynamically during the execution, you can easily replace the network stack. And if you run some test available in this site, the graph should show more higher uh, <laughs> higher throughput, but uh, it's it's actually using the multiple path at the same time. Uh, it's stored. I mean, I don't know. So, and you can also use some sort of the custom application. So this application is just executing uh, available uh, existing application inside the, uh, this, uh, this phone. And uh, if you change the library name, you can see the car command will report the, uh, the client is not capable with the mass pass TCP. Okay, it's not coming, so I can skip this part. Okay, so one natural question for this kind of stuff is um, how much penalty do you have with this uh, user space extension? And uh, we are going to measure the differences between this this user space execution on the network stack as well as the the stock version of the network stack in the Android phone. So we conducted this um, typical network measurement by using by using the mobile phone as well as the server installs with the multiple TCP kernel. And we use the netpath as well with the 10 second TCP stream and the opposite direction and with the five trials between the different bucket, uh, different bucket sites. And we also collected some of the CPU utilization information reported from the network command. And those are plotted on to, on to the those graph. And the box plot showing this purple one, the green one, represents the achieved good put um, represented with this uh, fast, fast y-axis. Uh, and the points with the error bar indicates the CPU utilization during this measurement. And uh, located, uh, pointed with this uh, axis. And in this fast graph, fast plot, we only use the single pass communication, which utilize only the Wi-Fi interface. And uh, we use the LKL equipped network and the stock volume of the network. 
and we didn't see any much big differences between the good uh, between the achieved good put available with these different configuration but you could see the CPU utilization of for example for this blue one is less than the the yellow one which means the LK in this case LK consumes less than CPU processing cycle but this is very exceptional case I mean I'm going to show a couple more graphs and uh, those graphs uh, shows the very different the different result which shows the the in terms of the CPU utilization. So the result was a result of the CPU utilization, especially with LKL, is really unstable. So this is the case with the multipass communication. So in this uh, measurement, we use uh, custom Android firmware with the multipass TCP extension. And we compare those two uh, compared with LKL and the multipass TCP kernel in Android phone. And achieved good put, especially for the uh, TCP stream case in the left figure, uh, the good put was, uh, LKL good put was mm, bigger than the native one, even though they are using the multiple passes. And one of the reasons of these differences is we couldn't align the all the parameters available for the multipass TCP extension. Uh, for example, the congestion control algorithm for those two different way and configuration are using a different one. So maybe we may need more deeper investigation for this kind of measurement. And I also conducted another experiment in my hotel room yesterday. And uh, I think the results are almost the same. And uh, the CPU utilization are, are really unstable. And the LKL consumes much more um, processing, processing cycles. And um, I was not aware of the any root cause of the this CPU uti utilization unstableness. But uh, one, might, uh, one possible reason for this kind of unstableness is because we are using the same IP address between the host kernel and the user space network stack. Um, this is kind of limitation on the current implementation, but we need to use the same IP address. And, uh, if you use the same IP address in the same and two different uh, network stack, the incoming packet is going through the two directions, and this, uh, and this host kernel should filter out the response packet from this one. For example, if you receive sync ACK packet from the, the endpoint, this host stack is not aware of this established connection uh, happened in this user space network stack. Network stack. So I, we configure the IP tables to eliminate the TCP reset packet from the host kernel. Those kind of additional processing might be the cause of the uh, CPU's utilization unstableness. <laughs> And uh, there are still uh, various limitations and uh, restrictions for the user space network stack. IP address configuration are really tricky. We can only configure the IP address at the time of the uh, application execution. So you cannot obtain the newer IP address during the handover, which might be resolved by some additional way. <laughs> and the hijack library has also fundamental issues. Which are not uh, which are not safe in the asynchronous signal, and we are our implementation is also not as not safe with the much much threatening environment. And we also require the additional tricks for the Android platform in order to assign the uh, required permission to the application. We are going to uh, investigate further. With this, with this current available result. And we are going to compare with a, a different platform. For example, iOS 11 from Apple introduced the new uh, user space implementation of the network stack. And uh, if we have a chance, maybe we will go, go for this comparison. So to sum up my talk, so out of three code, 
is no longer taking so much time to play with you. You can introduce the library, this library, make your code is easier to distribute all over the world. But at the same time, uh, at this moment, we need to have a, um, a couple of tricks before using that. And uh, we are going. To we are still in the middle of the uh, measurement analysis, so we are going to investigate more about the, uh, the result that I showed. Yes, I showed this uh, to them. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm happy to take any of questions.